All right. Thank you for joining me. I'm Brian Banks from Your Career Day. Can you give me your name? Sean Martin, bro. And where is your hometown? Uh, my hometown, I'm a native New Yorker, but I've been living in the D.C. area for the last 20 plus years. So I guess I, I, I guess uh, I'm a New York <laughs> D.C. native. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, so what's your career title, Sean? I'm an artist slash writer. Okay. Now, what does being an artist slash writer entail? Uh, well, well, the art industry spans so many different types of art. For the mm -hmm. most part, I'm, I'm, I do a lot of work for in comic books. Uh, okay. uh, okay. I've done a lot of work for Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, Image. And so I draw, I illustrate comic books. So I've worked on titles like Batman, Luke Cage, uh, Black Panther. I work on a series called Thief of Thieves with Robert Kirkman, who's the creator of The Walking Dead. Um, and, and I'm currently writing a, a series for DC Comics featuring the Red Hood, who comes from the Batman universe. Okay. Uh, but, I also, but I also do a lot of mainstream illustration. Uh, so I've, I've done, well, I'm a regular contributor to Vanity Fair. Uh, mm -hmm. I've done storyboards for documentaries on Netflix and on ABC. So yeah, I really kind of run the gamut in terms of uh, illustrating. Wow. Wow. Okay. So what does um, the job entail? Well, it depends. So if I'm working in the comic industry, and I'm, that means I'm illustrating a comic book. So mm -hmm. if you think about a comic book, a comic book is usually 20 to 22 pages. Mm -hmm. and a script and so usually if i am illustrating the comic book i will get a script and i have to draw all 22 pages of the story okay uh, which is basically visualizing the script if i'm being hired to write a script then i literally have to come up with a story that has a beginning a middle and an end and i have to script that out in the whatever pages are allotted okay yeah but then again like i said art spans so many different genres so if i'm hired to work as a storyboard artist, like I was for um, the Blood Brothers documentary on Netflix. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend that. Everybody should check it out. It's all about the real life friendship between Malcolm X and um, uh, Muhammad Ali. And and so for that project, they wanted to have some flashback scenes, uh, uh, which they didn't have footage of at the mm -hmm. time. So they hired me to visualize those store those scenes. So I did storyboards, and then I did final art, which they ended up animating for the final documentary. So those are just various examples of yeah. uh, art that I do. Okay. Now, what type of education is required? Well, this is the tricky one. Mm -hmm. Because I, I went to a four-year college. I went to the School of Visual Arts, and I got my degree, uh, uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts in Illustration. Mm -hmm. But in the creative field, you do not need a proper education. Okay. No one has ever asked me what college I went to before I got a job. They don't care. They only care about the quality of your portfolio. Now, the reason why I say it's kind of a tricky situation is you don't need college to get a job mm -hmm. as a creative person. However, you need that skill level and you get that skill level by going to school and studying your craft. So, you know, uh, so, so that's the tricky thing. So yes, you do need some formal training unless you're just a genius that just woke up when you were a little kid and began drawing. You don't need any kind of structure. You don't need to understand perspective or anatomy. Mm -hmm. You just know it, but that's what you go to school for. Right. You go to school to learn the foundation, learn the basics of the craft of drawing and illustration and painting. And then you apply that to your industry. Okay. Now, what is the best type of person suited for this type of career? Uh, that's a tough one because they're crazy people in the creative industry. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're crazy people in every industry, but especially yeah. in the creative. In, like, I have a number of friends that are super talented, but they're crazy. Yeah. So, but I, I definitely say though, when when I say uh, give advice to aspiring artists uh, and writers you have to what kind of temperament is you have to be dedicated to your craft mm -hmm. you have to be dedicated to practicing and honing your craft and making it better every chance you can get and you have to practice it's almost like being an athlete being an artist and being a writer is like being an athlete you have to practice every day mm -hmm. you have to try to strengthen your craft and you have to look at what's around you and look at the competition and say okay 
is what I'm doing comparable to what they're doing? Right. Use that as inspiration to better your craft. So I guess the kind of temperance is uh, the kind of temper temperament that you would need is dedication. Mm -hmm. You need okay. dedication and you need focus to be able to do this. So you talked about practice and this is not something I was intending to ask, but how do you practice being an artist? What, what do you do? Well, I was taught by uh, a veteran, uh, one of the first professional comic book artists that I met. I met uh, back when I was in high school is Walt mm -hmm. Simonson. Walt Simonson is one of the comic book veterans. He, if you look at those Thor movies, a lot of that stuff is based on his run on Thor when he was writing and drawing it. Okay. And he gave me some really great advice, which is get paid to practice. Mm -hmm. So when I got my first job working for Marvel Comics way back in 1992, I started practicing. So the more jobs you get, that's how you practice. Okay. Now, until you start getting jobs, you draw every day. Okay. You draw every day or you write every day. And, and for me, writing is all is very interesting because over my career, I've worked with some of the best are, uh, writers in the comic industry mm -hmm. and I would illustrate their scripts. So in, in essence, I was sort of getting a, a free tutorial in writing mm -hmm. by illustrating these scripts written by these writers. And I would see how they would break down a story, how they would construct a, a narrative and how they would build character and the pacing. And that inspired me to want to write as well. Right. So now that I write, for me, one of the crucial things about writing is just simply editing. Okay. I'm constantly editing what I do. Mm -hmm. like, I will write a draft of a script and I will go over that script at least 10 times in terms of cutting, refining, what can I do better? What can I make better? Mm -hmm. And also, and, and that's how I practice my craft. But before you get into this industry, I would recommend seeking out a professional or someone with a background in what it is that you want to do and get feedback from them. Right. I always tell aspiring artists, don't show your work to your family and friends if you want mm -hmm. real advice. Because number one, they love you. And number two, they don't know what the heck, they don't know what good art is. Right. So they'll say, hey, listen, that, that looks good. Now listen, go make dinner or go set the table or go wash your clothes right. or, or hey, when are we going to go play some basketball or whatever? You have to find someone who does this for a living and right. they or a teacher or someone like maybe a professor and say, hey, listen, can I show you something? Can you give me some real honest feedback? And those, then that's the kind of advice that you will want to get because that will make you, that'll identify the weaknesses and whatever your craft is. And that's how you can sort of identify that, work on that and get better. And that's how you can practice. Okay. Um, can you talk about the role, your road to your current position? How'd you get to where you are right now? Well, like I said, I went to, I'm originally from the Bronx, New York. And um, when I was a kid, when I was in elementary school, I used to sketch in a sketch pad. And my mom and my dad saw that I had a talent mm -hmm. uh, to draw. And so they enrolled me in a local community center painting class. And so maybe once or twice a week, I would go and paint, you know, with uh, this amazing teacher. His name is Emilio. Um, that gave me structure, also kept, kept me out of nonsense you know, in terms of like, you know, getting caught up in nonsense in the streets. And that really said, okay, that really gave me a direction of what I wanted to do. And then I went to the school, I'm sorry, I went to Fiorello LaGuardia High School of Music and Art, which is the fame school where the movie mm -hmm. kind of come, comes from. And I studied art there and I was immersed with other aspiring artists and right. also the creative types. And so when you get around other creative people, that stimulates you and inspires you to create. And also, mm -hmm that being around all those other creative types makes you want up your game makes right. you want to get better and so from there i said okay well i definitely needed to go to college because you do need a college degree as a basic <laughs> even if i don't if i decided i didn't want to go into art or creative mm -hmm. aspect having a college, college degree is mandatory these days right and my mom was a school teacher and so there was no way i was not going to college <laughs> both her and my dad were like you're going to college so, so i went to the school of visual arts which is one of the top art schools in the country mm -hmm. and um i studied illustration I, and i really started practicing well i continue to practice my craft in terms of drawing comics and yeah. uh, and anatomy so that's pretty much and then from there i was determined not to wait until i graduated college to start looking for a job mm -hmm. why because that's when everyone's looking for a job right so i started looking for a job in the comic book industry when i was a junior at sba and i went to a uh, comic convention, which was the New York Comic Con. And back in the 90s, that was the only Comic Con in the country. 
and wow. Marvel and DC would send their editors there um, and they would look for talent. Mm -hmm. and if you wanted to get into the comic book industry, you would wait on a line with your portfolio, show the editor your work. They would flip through your portfolio. If they liked it, mm -hmm. you know, they'd give you a card. Or if you weren't quite ready, they'd say, work on this, work on that, work on this, and then come back and see me. Wow. And luckily, I scored a card, called up the editor, and that pretty much led to me getting my first work in comic books for Marvel Comics. And I've been working in the industry ever since. Wow, that's amazing. So I, I kind of know the answer to this already, but what makes this career fun, interesting, or exciting, or all the above? I love the aspect of creating, mm -hmm. creating something from nothing. Now that can be very intimidating because to me, trust me, like the scariest thing for an artist is a blank piece of paper mm -hmm. because you have to start from scratch right. and create all of this. But I love the the energy that you get from creating and also finding your voice in your art. Um, now that I'm writing, you can, I can find my voice in the words that I write for characters to speak. But before mm -hmm. when I was simply, when I was just an artist or not just, but when I was an artist, right. just creating an image out of my head is beyond satisfying. And yeah. so I, and I really learned that I, I'm a very good storyteller. Storytelling is something that's just ingrained in me. And so that's, mm -hmm. That, that that's just a rush that I, I, I it, it's exciting. When I start drawing and when I'm done with something, I'm like, wow, okay, that is amazing that they, that they came out of my head and actually came through my hands. So, yeah, you know, I, I've watched you work and it is amazing to see how you do it. It's, it's really cool to see. Yeah. Uh, let me, last question. What advice would you give to someone that might want to follow in your footsteps? Well, I did, like I said before, you, you need some kind of training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some kind of training, unless you're just a genius right out the, out the, out the box, but very few people are yeah. so you need some kind of formal training. So I would definitely recommend taking an art class, taking a drawing class. You have to learn the basics of drawing first before you mm -hmm. can start, you know, before you start getting cool and doing effects and all this stuff, you got to learn how to draw anatomy perspective you know, understanding how light and dark works, mm -hmm. like, you know, that that's light and shadow works. That's the basic. So you have to start, you have to study and then you need to practice. And then whichever t aspect of the art industry you want to get into, you have to do your research and say, okay, well, how do those people get jobs? What kind of job is it that I want? Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing when I've spoken at colleges and I, I, I've asked kids, well, what do you want to, you know, some of the students, what do you want to do? And they'll say, I want to work in animation. And I'm like, well, what do you want to do? I don't know. Right. I'm like, there's no excuse to say I don't know. Mm -hmm. You have access to the internet. You know, <laughs> back when back when I was in college, there was no internet. If you can even imagine, right. <laughs> there was no internet. There was no email. You literally had to look something up at the library. You yeah. know, to say, okay, what was the, what were the firms that were hiring? Write it down and mail your copies to them mm -hmm. to try. To so studying, researching. I can't stress that enough because the most important commodity in this world, it's not jewelry, it's not money, it's 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 not a thing, it's information. Right. People kill for information. Wealthy people, that's what they want, information, because right. that allows them to plan. So the most so so I would totally stress doing your homework and researching whatever mm -hmm. field you want to get into left and right. So if you happen to meet someone in that field, you know how to present yourself so that you can get work in that field. That is great advice. Well, Sean, thank you for being here with me. I appreciate your knowledge and uh, continued success. Oh, my pleasure and good luck. Thank you.